Hey everybody, thanks for joining us today for Scott's Analytics Angle. Uh, my name is Scott Everett. I am the Vice President of Healthcare Solutions with Practical Data Solutions. And today I wanna to talk to you a little bit about um, what to do when you're changing systems. Let's talk a little bit about that. Changing systems is really something that is going on a lot in healthcare right now. We, As we talk to more and more people, uh, we find that People are changing EMRs, they're changing billing systems. Um, there's several reasons for this. A lot of times they, they need the technology to be a little bit more up to date. Uh, they need it to accommodate some growth that they're having. Um, you know, we are seeing a lot of mergers and acquisitions going on in the market right now. Sometimes they want a little bit better integration between their billing system and their, and their EHR. Whatever the reason, a lot of times it, it is definitely a very, very intense task that comes up. And it's something that when we talk to people, they, they a lot of times tell us, you know, we don't even really have time to focus on our uh, analytics right now. We're, uh, we're so busy with this new uh, implementation that, that analytics has really taken a, a back seat. And I'll tell you this right now, as someone who's done this a couple of times, changing systems is a is the last place where you wanna lose sight of your analytics. In fact, you probably need it at that point more than ever. Let's talk a little bit about why that is. Obviously, analytics are for management, okay? We're not using analytics just so that we can get out the monthly reports. We're not using analytics just so that we have, you know, something on a, a sheet of paper that we can pin up on the wall back behind us. Analytics are for management. We're using it so that we can see what's going on within the organization. We're using it so that we can catch problems early. And when you're going through an implementation, you're gonna have some early problems. You're gonna wanna be able to find those out and, and see what you can do. In addition to that, you wanna make sure that you're kind of diagnosing the problems. What is causing these, these issues? And analytics can really help you drill in and understand what's causing the issues that you're seeing. And of course, once you find those, the analytics are gonna tell you some steps that you can take in order to make some immediate adjustments. And that's what's gonna keep little problems from turning into really big problems really quickly. So as you're going through this, I wanna talk about five really key metrics you wanna measure while you're going through this implementation. And these are things that'll help you get up to speed more quickly, help you do your planning a little bit better, and help you guys keep your, your cash flow from stopping altogether. So the first one I talk about is, is blatantly obvious. It's the whole reason you're putting this stuff into the billing system at your age day AR. Okay, you just spent millions of dollars on a, on a billing system or, a, or an EHR. Um, now's really, really not a good time for you guys to shut your cash flow down. Okay, you need to make sure that you're looking at measuring from both systems. Now, sometimes you may move the AR over into the, the new system. Sometimes you may work it down from the legacy system. I've seen it done both ways and I've seen it done effectively both ways. But I will say if you're doing it from both systems at the same time, it can get difficult in order to be able to get reports out of both systems and try to manage effectively that way. So you do want to make sure that you're looking at both systems. You want to make sure that you're, you're hitting the collections. You're going to see spikes. And I'll just tell you that right now. You're going to see spikes as things change as charges get up to speed and it takes a little longer for your collections to get processed. It's okay. Okay, the, the spikes are fine. Just don't let them be more than a, a month or two that, that they last that way. And uh, one other thing that I've seen a lot of organizations do that I think is kind of a mistake sometimes is they really focus on those higher volume collections and trying to spend a lot of effort getting those high dollar collections when they may have a, a significant number of lower dollar collections, which are a lot more collectible you're gonna have a lot more success actually turning those lower dollar balances into cash than you are the high dollar balances. So make sure that you're spending some time on those low dollar balances and collecting what you can off of those. And don't just focus on, on getting those higher dollar um, balances because a lot of times you're just gonna end up writing a lot of those off anyway. All right, the second things we wanna talk about are charge volumes. And the charge volumes are really critical because What's going on as you bring this new system into play is you're training your people, you're training your charge entry staff, you're training your coding staff, 
And what's going to happen is there's going to be a learning curve that's associated with that. So that's going to slow everything down. Now, the choice that you have is whether you're going to allow that dip to be a canyon or are you going to allow it to be a valley? And what I mean by that as a canyon is you're going to go ahead and just rip the Band-Aid off and you're going to get everybody trained all at once and you're going to have everybody going through the learning curve at the same time. Now, what that's going to happen is that's going to cause a pretty steep drop in your charge entry productivity. Now, again, that's okay because as everybody's going through it at the same time, that dip is going to last not very long at all and it'll come back up to speed much more quickly once you're done. Okay, so that's the canyon concept. The valley concept is where you're a little bit slower. The dip is a little bit less steep, but it lasts much, much longer. So what you want to do with, with the, the valley philosophy there is you're trying to, to get people trained just a little bit at a time and you're letting people be productive as much as they can be as it goes. And, and again, you don't necessarily hit that lower end of your charge volumes, but you're, it takes a much, much longer time to get up to speed with where you typically are with your charge volume. So really take a look at that and understand what the, that means for your organization. And if you can, that Canyon philosophy usually works out much better in the long run. Kind of going hand in hand with the, the charge volumes, the next thing we wanna talk about are the charge lags, okay? Now, the charge lags, as people get up to speed, again, it's gonna take a little bit longer to get them into the, the system. That's okay as long as it's a couple of days and it's not turning into uh, multiple weeks in order to get those in because what happens is your providers are still being as productive as possible. Your providers are still providing you with charges to uh, enter into the system and the longer it takes to get people up to speed, it becomes like that old I Love Lucy candy shop sketch where yeah, it's fine at the very beginning, but as things get more and more backed up, it's much, much more difficult to catch up with what with the backlog that's out there. So just understand that and make sure you're monitoring your charge lags. Make sure that you're seeing when those spikes occur, that they're not lasting a long time. You need to make sure that your productivity gets up to speed pretty quickly. You're going to want to take a look at your denial volumes as well, particularly in the areas of like provider enrollment, patient registration, patient information that, that comes across. A lot of times what happens is when you bring up this new system, there may be some mapping issues that come across between your system, the clearinghouse and the payer system that, that you're working with. And so it takes a little bit to get those corrected. Again, it's fine. You may see a spike initially. That's actually a good thing. Make sure that you're noticing those. Make sure you're digging in and finding out what's going on and then get it corrected. Work with your payers to see what you need to do in order to make those corrections work. And then make sure that you're monitoring on the back end that you're getting paid for those upon appeal or upon resubmission of these claims. Uh, don't just sit and hope that you know everything's working out okay as you move forward. Make sure you're getting paid for what you've already submitted once they get corrected. The, the final issue we want to talk about then is uh, patient satisfaction with the billing. So when you bring up a new system, a lot of times your patient statements are going to change. And um, particularly with your, your older patients, you may find that um, there can be some confusion that comes across. Maybe you went from a departmental billing to a, to a single billing office where you have all specialties and balances created on a single statement that can be confusing. So you wanna make sure that you have some customer service available for these patients. You may wanna make sure that you're looking at what's, uh, what's going on, look at some of the calls that are coming in. You may even wanna make sure that you're monitoring your call center statistics to see the volume of calls that are coming in, if there are wait times, things like that. This can be a major patient satisfaction issue. This can be a major patient experience issue. This could be a thing that impact your online reviews. This can be a thing that can impact what your patients are saying about you from the standpoint of quality incentives. So really the, the billing and statement and collection of patient accounts is part of the patient experience and it shouldn't be something that is trivialized or, or minimized with the practices. It's very important to make sure that your patients are having a good experience with that as well because anything that goes wrong can mar 
any sort of care that they're getting from the, the organization. So make sure that you're monitoring what's going on with regard to your patient statements, your, your customer service, and make sure that you're working with your patients to uh, give them a good experience with this uh, billing process on the back end as well. We wish you all very good luck with the conversion that you're going through. As always, PDS has done this a lot. We've worked with a lot of organizations that has gone through billing system conversions. I'll tell you this right now, if you're trying to report out of a legacy system as well as your new system, PDS Dash is a tremendous tool for that because of its data blending ability and the ability to create and automate dashboards out of multiple different data sources and multiple systems. If you have some questions or if there's anything that we can do to help out, please feel free to contact PDS and we'll be happy to uh, get, get in touch with you as soon as we can and we would love to be able to work with you in this process. So hopefully we'll see you again in the next episode of the Analytics Angle. For now, goodbye.